Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hello and welcome back to Combat Sports UK. Today, I am joined with UFC heavyweight, debuting at UFC London, Michael Parkin. How you doing? I'm good, mate. You? I'm doing well, man. Now let's talk about your Dana White Contender Series fight. It was your first professional win by submission, and you maintained that 100% finish rate. How do you feel about that fight looking back? Yeah, I think it was a perfect fight for the time. I think uh, it was definitely the hardest uh, fight to date at the uh, pro. Um, the guys I'd beat up to that probably weren't a great standard. It was really hard for heavyweights to get matched. I feel like there's only maybe a couple of good ones and then there's not rest, not that great. Um, it's definitely a bit shallower, the pool. So a fight I was put in front of was I had a lot of like pullouts early on in my career and a lot of like last minute fighters while taking the fight in two days' notice or a week's notice. So a bit frustrating. So they got matched with Eduardo. I knew he was a um, well, good finish. I knew he was explosive and that. It would be a very hard test. So to get the win of him was a great feeling. And uh, the win you got, it was very similar to a teammate of yours, Tom Aspinall's submission win over Andre Arlovsky. Was that in the back of your head when, when you were going through that sequence? Um, well, I can grapple as well. Most people say he's a striker, but I think the grappling's definitely underrated as well. But I just remember feeling he went crazy the first like, minute or two and he was like exhausted. So I got I more just that. I didn't really get that much in training, really. I think I must have just... Uh, was presented and I got so but yeah I think it was more exhaustion from him than me getting the submission maybe I feel like he uh, spent and was exhausted there was nothing else left and he it was a gift they give, give us his neck and uh, you train with two very high profile uh, athletes you're sharing this next card with them Tom Aspinall and Paul Craig uh, what is it like being with that them in that room oh it's amazing I've um, so our first last Started training at me, gym. I'm at now TFT. Uh, with Phil the Freeze, he would do a lot of sparring with uh, Paul Craig originally. So Paul would come down a lot of us and spar because there's not many big guys like his weight, and we were probably the closest ones like competitive. So we travelled down do a lot of his camps here. So got friendly with him. Then I would travel up and help him with his camps, and uh, maybe go up there a couple of days a week and help him. And then uh, that's where that uh, friendship came from. So me, Phil, and Paul were training, and then through. My friend was trained, moved to a gym down in Liverpool and was trained there at like, Kelbourne and places like that. And uh, he said it was heavyweight there, uh, Tom Aspinall. This is about, again, it wasn't in the UFC. I think he might have just been on Cage Warriors. So I obviously knew he was good. I'd seen him like fight. So I went down and trained with him a couple of times. And that's how I started training with him. And obviously, he was amazing. Then started like smashing it in the UFC. Then I was, kept training. Then obviously, my friend Phil, he went down and started training with him. And that like shared. So at the minute, we'll go down Wigan where he trains now. Uh, in camp maybe once a week for like two days, do some training sessions there because I've got a lot of big guys, uh, do t- two days down there, then come back up to the northeast of England and then finish the rest of my week's training here. And then just I'll keep doing that till I say like a week out from me five, just get some good sparring with the guys. And you're a young pro, um, but you had a long amateur career as well. How important is that, do you feel, is an amateur career to the growth of a fighter? Oh, it's definitely important. I feel like I'm at the why you should be making mistakes and stuff like that. So, as people rush to go pro and then like you lose that pro, it's on your record for life. I'm at the it's sort of like a clean slate. So, my original Jimmy was big on us fighting amateur quite a lot. So, all of us had quite a big amateur record. Well, mine was I think I was six wins, one draw amateur. So, even that's not the massive amateur record, but probably it's a bit different for pro. But no, it definitely helped get the experience and get rid of like them fight nerves and everything when you turn pro. So I definitely recommend some people, especially younger fighters, there's no rush. Get a good amount of record then, start tri- uh, fighting pro. And looking at UFC London, it's a great matchup, I feel like, just in general for the fans. You versus Jamal Pogues. Tell me about it. How do you feel about the matchup? He is also a Dana White Contender Series alum. Oh, yeah, I think it was a great matchup. Um, I heard I was fighting Jamal. I think I'd watched him win the Contender Series, I think. I always keep an eye on the heavyweights who were fighting the Contender Series just because you never know. So I think I watched them win it once. I don't think I saw his original fight in the UFC. I might have, but I couldn't remember it. So I knew I was matched when I watched these fights. And I remember then I saw he'd won it at light heavyweight as well previously. But I think it's a good matchup. I think he's 10-3. Obviously, he's fought in the UFC now and won one. 
I think it's quite an even fight, really, as there were. I'm 6 and one that was a pro. He's a bit more experienced professional. But um, obviously, for the UFC level, he's had one fight I haven't yet. So I think it's pretty uh, fairly matched between us. And um, I've been watching him. I feel I know what he's good at. So I've got a good game plan for uh, what to do on the day. And uh, we see a lot nowadays, like a lot of debuting fighters, including Jamal, making their debut at the UFC Apex on a smaller card. But you yourself, you're making your UFC debut in front of the home crowd. Are you excited to have fans on your UFC debut? Oh, yeah, it's perfect, isn't it? I always, people kept asking us, oh, do you want to fight abroad? Or do you want to fight again? So, obviously, fighting America was great and that. It's obviously a lot of travel and stuff like that. But when we first wanted to be at London, all my friends and family can go. I feel like it's absolutely perfect fight for us. Um, obviously, Tom's on the card, Paul's on the card. So, it's two of my teammates who are train with on the card as well. So, some fairly faces like fight week. And uh, I feel like it's absolutely, absolutely perfect. Nice, because realistically, I know there's more cards coming to England, but it could be a long time before I fight in England again. So I feel like this is absolutely perfect for me, especially for my debut. And uh, how do you see this fight going? You know, you've got the 100% finish rate pro and amateur. Is that where you see just another finish, or are you just going to take what's coming? Uh, I always just train for the three rounds, you know, especially at this level. It's, there's no more easy fights. Um, I know he's went to decision quite a lot in a few of his fights, so he's ready to go three rounds, but so am I. But I feel like on the day, I'm a little bit better at a few things, and the things he's good at, I've got a really good system, I think, to beat. So I'm really confident coming in right now. And uh, you mentioned sharing the card with Tom Aspinall and Paul Craig. You know, Tom Aspinall finally back after the knee injury, Paul Craig back after the loss in in January in a new weight class. Uh, so... Is it, is it, are you glad you're sh getting to share this card with teammates you've had for a longer time? Or, or is it just like, this is just the event? No, I think it's definitely good to be on with uh, Tom and Paul. Like I said, fight week. Um, don't really do a lot anyway of training, but obviously with Tom being there and his dad, we probably say go around places with him because I think I'm there for like the week of London. And there's not much training that I can do. So the coach comes down with us, but just a few more people like not about with. I'm quite friendly with Tom and Paul now. So, I'm at the way, go a little bit easier, Phil. And uh, in terms of the next fight, obviously you don't want to look past Jamal, but uh, you win in London. How soon do you want to get back in the cage? And if there's an opponent in mind, maybe? Oh, um, no injuries. I get back straight away. I think um, after the fight, I've got like, I always like a week off. I think I'm on, like a little holiday with my girlfriend. So I'll like, have a week of chill, but then I'll be straight back in the gym. I don't take long times off. Um, even out of fight camps, I still train twice a day, just maybe not as far as heavy. So, uh, get this one out of the way then. Yeah, whatever they want. I'm not really calling anybody out this level. I feel like it's not until you get a bit higher up. Like, I feel like I'm going to just fight out the tell you. And uh, the main event, your teammate Tom Aspinall taking on Marcin Tabura. That fight, you know, was rumoured for a long time. It finally has come to fruition. How do you see that fight going? Oh, well, I think Tom is going to smash him. I honestly train with Tom. He's absolutely amazing. Like, everybody sees how good he is, but like, I get to see firsthand. Ah, he's amazing. His attitude towards training, how hard he trains, and like uh, some of the stuff he does for a big guys, I can see him. So I think they'll see a different level of Tom, especially now that he's got two good knees. Um, you'll probably see him even better. Like he's probably only scratched the surface of what he's been doing. And uh, your other teammate, Paul Craig, we've mentioned him a lot. Uh, he's taking on Mun uh, Andre Muniz in a new weight class. Is there anything else to why, you know, he's explained a little bit why he's going down to 185? I haven't really spoken about it yet, but I definitely know Wednesday, I think he's coming to do a bit training with us, so I'll probably get the gist of it then. But, um, no, I, I don't know why. I think um, maybe he's he's never been huge for like heavyweight, even though he looks like a big guy. I think sometimes he was a bit like 100 kilo, maybe just below. So unless it's easy for him to make middle weight, he's going to be definitely be huge for that. So hopefully he gets back to winning ways because uh, he's good and he's always in, in uh, great fights and he's always getting them bonuses. Hopefully he gets back a few submissions. One of the things that a lot of people are saying on Twitter, you know, because, you know, he had the, the knockout loss to Johnny Walker recently. You know, he's been knocked out to a five. People are concerned about his chin holding up on, on the new weight class. What what do you think about that? Do you think that's a concern or, for him or is it, you know, he can fight in a more maybe natural weight class? Um, it definitely would be a bigger guy. Um, I know what you're saying. Uh, only he knows that best, you know what I mean? Like some fighters drop away and look absolutely amazing, some don't. So it's definitely his first one. So. I'm just like you. I, I'm kind of wait to see him. So hopefully, the size advantage gives him a big uh, uh, 
advantage, especially with a big like more of a grappler. The size will probably definitely be better for him. And um, one of the things I always a- like to ask fighters is uh, what you think. Why should fans tune in to see Michael Parkin fight at UFC London? Oh, right. Well, obviously, everybody likes to see heavyweights anyway, so that's a good thing. Um, always getting finishes. I'm not in boring fights. I don't think I'm a boring heavyweight. I feel like I'm not one of them that's going to look to pin people, strike more. I'm definitely, I would say, a bit more technical than the rest of the heavyweights that... Um, the trains went the next level. I feel absolutely amazing. So everyone tune in and watches. And last one, uh, last question. What is your message to Jamal Pogues before this matchup? Oh, I hope he's ready because I definitely am. So it should be a good fight. Um, I'm always nice to my opponents. Uh, we're both having the same thing. But um, yeah, I'm getting the win that night, definitely. Great, man. I'm excited for it. I'll be there in person. It's my first UFC event. And I believe you're, what, Great. the second fight? Is that... Uh, I've seen so many things that I might even be the first. I might even be the first. Uh, here, I can check. I've got it pulled up now. Um, I can yeah. check. I, I think I've only seen what my uh, friend said. Isn't it was like a picture of the card, but I wasn't sure how official it was. Yeah, well, like I don't know if you're on Twitter much, but Marcel he always tweets out the bout order, so I can I'm gonna find it very quickly for you. But um, right. would do you prefer fighting early on a card, or do you not mind uh, waiting a little bit? I've been used to fighting, even when I was amateur, really high up on the card, was being a heavyweight, so I've always been waiting about, I think, one fight I was on early. That was crazy, but no, I think it'd be better for me first one, get it uh, in out of the way. They need it. The longer it goes, the more nervous you get, so I'll get in, get it done, and then I'll be able to watch the rest of the UFC as a fan and uh, watch Tom and Paul uh, get wins as well, so i have a few biggest maybe as well, so I think earlier the better. So so the I'm, I'm looking at the bouter now. You're the fourth fight. Uh, oh, on fourth. fourth, so uh, I can read it to you. Bannon versus Brazil is the first fight. Uh, Chris Duncan versus Yamal Ashmus is the second fight. Kellen Vieira is shockingly very low on the card. Uh, Barbarena, and then your fight. All right, oh, great. Uh, there's no need for all like I said, I know I'll be on the prelims, I'd expect it to be first one, so any yeah. orders, not really, first, you know what I mean. But our fourth fight now, all I can tell people. Then. Are you surprised that Paul Craig's fight wasn't put in the co-main event slot? He's he's the third fight on the main card. Molly McCann versus Stoli Renko has been placed as the co-main. Um, for like experience, you'd think Paul, but for like it's for the fans, isn't it? I think especially a uh, few people might be shocked, but she, she is really uh, she got a massive fan base like uh, yeah. Molly and that uh, Paddy when they fought. So I'd say why they've done it because the steam will probably bounce for the co-main. There'll be a lot coming down to watch her. So see both sides to it really. But yeah, Paul maybe should have been called me a lot more experience. But maybe because they knew a weight class as well, they might have dropped him down a little bit. So, Yeah, man. Well, thank you so much for being here on the show at Combat Sports UK. And if you have anything else to say, shout out sponsors or anything, here's your platform. Yeah. Um, three main sponsors at the minute, sponsors for this fight. I've got a Black Onyx uh, tattoo studio. Um, a friend of mine, SR Savian. The, um, a civil engineering company and then Kish Mortars, the person who does um, interiors for cars. Great, man. Thank oh, you so and, much. And one that's done me food forever has been around uh, Premier Nutrition. I couldn't forget them. And where can fans follow you on social media? Oh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, just on Instagram, not on Twitter or anything. Uh, Mick Parker 95 is on Instagram. Perfect. Thank you so much and have a great Thanks. night, man. Cheers, mate. Thank you.